Okay, I guess we can start now. Yes. All right. <laughs> what a crowd. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Great. All right. Well, this is being recorded uh, for the podcast, so um, all of you in the crowd just pretend like you can't see anything on the screen. In fact, we just put these slides together a couple days ago. A couple days ago. In fact, this one was actually, I just used it from last year. <laughs> so it's the exact same one. Uh, Pixelated Audio is a podcast where we focus on game audio and the personas behind it. Uh, oh, we're going for it. <laughs> I was distracting laughs. No, um, we've been doing it now for 10 years. So oh, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, it's 2014 we started and it's 2024. So um, we're older, have more gray hair, uh, but we still love this stuff. So uh, we're just gonna keep going with it. Um, I don't think we need to talk about pixelated audio. Uh, I'm Brian, this is Gene, and joining us today is our good friend. Want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is AJ. I go by Rage Cage Online. Um, I've been listening to Pixelated Audio for a little shorter than those 10 years, but they were my first VGM podcast, and part of my inspiration to make my own podcast, VGM Emporium, which is currently on hiatus, but I have a 100-plus episode backlog for you to check out if you wish. But yeah, I'm, kinda, I'm honored to be here with you guys. Thanks. Uh, you know, we go on hiatus like every other month for like a month. <laughs> That's true. So it's, it's fine. I've, uh, I've, I use AJ's podcast as an opportunity to talk about really weird, deep cut, esoteric stuff that oh, Ryan's yeah. like, not even on our show. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's been on a couple times. Uh, his subjects were um, defunct California based companies and like musicians he, famous outside of BGM. Yeah, or more famous for things that they did outside of video game music. So, you know, it'd be like if Sting wrote, like, uh, well, actually, uh, Stuart <laughs> Copeland, actually, is, is one of those guys. <laughs> anyway, so today we're going to talk about Persona, because that's the theme of Mag West this year. So we said, you know what, there's a ton of games in the series, it's confusing as hell. Uh, we're not going to try to break it down into some kind of chronological order, but we are going to talk about Persona, listen to a few tracks, and yeah, it's fun. Uh, we're not prepared for this, so um, if you're expecting anything, um, sorry. <laughs> I have next to no experience the Persona other than music. Okay, well that's good. That's good. That's that's most of what counts here. Um, Gene, you want to start us off? I, I would. So I'm going to keep this real brief. So I don't know how many people know this out in the listening audience there, but Persona obviously started before going all the way back to the Megami Tensai games. And even before that was a series of three graphic novels. Uh, the first one proved to be pretty popular. So they're like, let's turn this into kind of a media property. So one of the first things they did with it was they licensed it for a game. And so you get the Famicom game, uh, Megami Tensai, the first one, or Digital Double Story, Megami Tensai, which is where you get the whole Mega Ten thing from. It's the shortened version of like all the games that are kind of in this universe. Uh, it's 1986 for the comic and 1987 for the game. So it's going back, actually, I think all of these things are older even than I am, uh, which is saying something. Uh, but we're not here to talk about those games. What are we here to do, Brian? We're That's here, right. We're here for ranking every yes. single game. <laughs> every single game in the Mega Ten. No, I'm just kidding. Ooh. Obviously, we don't have that kind of time. We're going to skip right past that. But what we can say about this is it's become a huge media franchise. It's not just the you know, Shin Megami Tensai series or Persona. It's also split off into a lot of different sub-series, which if you go on the next slide, we'll go over to very briefly. So interesting thing about this series, um, for those of you who know a little bit or maybe a lot about the series, the Mega Ten or Shin Megami Tensai series is really focused on a lot of themes that are, I would say, difficult to either translate or localize or get approval for. So it's themes of religion, uh, spirituality, uh, the occult, technology, modern day Japan, these things, uh, you know, we were talking about censoring crosses <laughs> out of video games in the 80s, so this was never going to make it over, at least right when it first came over. Oh, we're doing a little selfie in the middle oh, of the, yeah. in the, middle in the, middle of the show. So yeah. I only bring up this slide to show that there were actually quite a few games in this whole lineage before we really got anything. I mean, let's be honest, the first game we got was Jack Bros for everybody's favorite. Oh, okay. Virtual Boy. <laughs> it was like a weird platformer top-down game. But the real first game that we got in America was Persona, which had a notoriously weird localization. Like, they... Uh, it was bad. Yeah, it was bad. Um, they eventually fixed that problem, but the, we started with the Megami Tensai series, then sort of the direct sequel, the Shin Megami Tensai series, 
Then there was a spin-off, the Devil Summoner series, and then finally Persona. So there's all these games that we never got, and then we get to the edgy PlayStation, you know, for teens, I guess. And that's when we finally get this game that's got all these really cool themes, and yeah, it's our first exposure here in America to the larger Mega Ten or Shinigami Ten size series. Maybe they thought it would translate well, not necessarily the, the localization, but the, the game mechanics might translate well to um, to the U.S. Uh, I don't think they thought it through too much because it, it wasn't really that popular here. It didn't get much of a, like it didn't gain much steam. And when we when we look at like the series as a whole, what it what what Gene is trying to say here too is like there were a lot of games before it, but what actually inspired Persona is one one game specifically, and um, <clears throat> that's uh, Shimigami Tensei. If this was uh, released for the Fam- Super Famicom, and it was released in 1984, and it was really well-received and brought a lot of players into this familiar high school setting. A lot of kids, uh, teenagers, were playing Super Nintendo at the time. They had kind of grown up through the NES and, and uh, prior, and so it was really relatable, and it brought into this kind of social, familiar um, high school environment with a lot of social, um, you know, kind of oddities and norms and teen... I don't know, high school thoughts, right? Um, you know, building relationships and understanding more about yourself. And so it really took off. And, and that's where Persona kind of spawned from was uh, th- this game specifically. Um, if the list, right, you know, that we, we showed earlier, uh, you know, our joke slide with how many games are, are part of the series, um, it's, it's not really even a testament because there's, you know, games uh, that, you know, they've made countless ports of spin-offs, of spin-offs, of spin-offs, uh, remakes, uh, like I said, ports to almost every other console. Fighting games, dancing games. Yeah. You know, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I mean, we're really focusing on the six main games in the series here, but uh, for, for this episode, but, you know, they made manga, graphic novels, anthologies, uh, anime, live action stage plays uh, about Persona. Um, drama, events, concerts about all the music. I mean, we're here, like, this event is based on Persona and... and Lotus Juice is here. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the the most famous rappers who, you know, got to start, I guess, got really big in Persona 3 and also did a bunch of tracks in 4 and 5 is here. I've met him. I've shaken his hand. He's a very nice person. I I hope you get a chance, if you're here at MagWest, to meet him. Um, We were supposed to have him on this panel. Yeah, you know. Well, it didn't work, but... We're, we're, we're all very busy. <laughs> but yes, get your merch signed over there. Enough plugs about that. Let's get into the first game, Persona, Revelations Persona, as it was called when it first came out here. Right, Revelations Persona, this was released in 1996. Uh, it follows an uh, pr- uh, unnamed protagonist, and uh, it's based on exactly what Persona, or Shin Megami Tensei, if, uh, tried to accomplish with like the high school setting. I mean, the rest of the games follow this this um, this. I guess, theme. And this was composed by four different people. They're really, they're kind of exploring this new type of way to, you know, understand, it's not Red Book Audio, but they're, they're so much more that they can do with the PlayStation hardware that they just couldn't do before. So uh, it was composed by Kenichi Tsuchiya, Hide Hido Aoki, Misaki Okibe, and Shoji Meguro. And man, I wish Meguro san was here. That yeah, would that would really that would be out. he he is not here. But astute listeners will know that last name obviously as the series continues, but he was just more of a bit player in the in the first game. Yep. So we're gonna we're gonna listen to a few tracks here. This is stuff that Gene and I had gone through this. Sorry, we didn't have you pick some of these tracks. We yeah, didn't but think no, about you it actually picked one that I was gonna suggest. Well good. First and second war shopping district. It's a great track. We yeah, we were just oh, in love yeah. with this last night. So let's take a listen to this. Um, we'll make sure the audio plays through the first time here.
This ain't your pappy's Dragon Quest. It's yeah. 1996. <laughs> yeah, this is this is awesome because they they really took a new approach to this this whole series, and they started it. It really started with this game. Like, yeah. let's do something that has more funk, more jazz, more modern kind of what you would see on the you know streets of Japan in the late eighties, early nineties, and let's let's you know promote that for the new era of game audio, if you will, for for the series. And it works so well, and it's continued through like to the latest games. So people have fell in love with this music. Uh, it's it's really good, but I think this is uh, definitely an iconic starting point for for Shimigami Tensei Persona. Anything to add? Well, um, I'll say like you know I know a lot of people like you know recently have really liked you know the more recent like Persona Four, Persona Five soundtrack because of just like the just that really clean and big sound of it, but I personally prefer the PlayStation, you know, so Persona Persona and Persona 2's music because that PlayStation jankiness <laughs> that's there is just that very unique sound that that comes with that sound processor because it is, um, I don't really know what to call, I don't even know what the processor is, just the SPU just, or ADU just, or... Just the PlayStation sound. Yeah, just the sound. PlayStation sound. So like, like you said, not Good. Redbook Audio, but it's just like all sample based. And they just, yeah, just did really weird stuff with it, and that's kind of like one of the things I really love about PlayStation is just that over all these games, like, you know, of course you get stuff that's trying to, like, get to that orchestral point, trying to be, like, real, or not real, but, like, actual recorded music, but then there's stuff like this that's just really, go, like, throwing everything to the wind and just going for it. And just, Sample MIDI, yeah. Yeah, really like, good. throwing, like, the scratches, the weird, like, that weird, um, like, twinkly pad that just kind of comes in really quick for a second and then just disappears. That stuff, I love it, like, um... Yeah, it's a very experimental era for games. I mean, you know, we still have really cool games, but you'd have big budget games that were just like trying things. Yeah, and the thing about this soundtrack too, and most of the Persona soundtracks, is like you don't really need any context. If you, if you bought this CD or something, I, I mean, the, nobody would even assume it's game audio. It, it's mostly that you know, kind of has a lot of break beats, jazz. Fusion, acid jazz, like there's so many yeah. different things in there that um, the I think the composers were trying to explore with this. A lot um, of ambient, a lot yeah. of ambient stuff too, just like more atmospheric, you know. We have another track here, and this definitely sounds more video gamey, so we wanted to throw it in because it does, uh, it does kind of. Well, it's a really great track, but it does uh, um, show the variation that you get in all these Persona soundtracks. You know, it's funny because this is like this is like my favorite track, and um, it's the most j poppy one too. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so good. It's it's yeah, it's fun. I can listen to this all the time. Oh, and there's yeah. so many like PlayStation nuances to this track too. Yeah. A lot of those synths you hear in like it reminds me of like Lunar in certain areas, yeah. and you know, uh, uh, Fantasy Star, and and the uh, all these different RPGs reuse the, a lot of the same the sound same samples. And so uh, it's it's just an awesome track, but definitely shows you the difference between that first one that we played, and then something like this. They were exploring everything. It's really cool. Um, Want to highlight three composers here? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about um, Megodosan later, but these these three composers were responsible for bringing up all of these new concepts and ideas into uh, the series. Uh, Kenichi Tsuchiya was a game composer who joined Atlas in 1995 and arguably one of the most well-known composers at Atlas. Uh, not only renowned for his heavy rock uh, and inspired, uh, heavy rock inspired themes, um, but brought a lot of like power ballads and uh, just 
unique, like heavy guitar compositions to the soundtrack. He's also a really impressive sound designer who did sound effects and uh, all, like sound effects for a lot of the games, but Persona 4 specifically, he was a sound director and for Shin Megami Tensei 4 as well. Hidehito Aoki was originally a member of the game development team, a, a programmer, but changed his role to composition shortly after uh, his development career started. And he ser served as chief sound designer along with uh, Masako Tsukasa um, on the Megami, uh, Megami Tensei series. Sadly, he passed away in 2002 at the age of 32 due to a car accident. And, uh, it, and, and it's sad because we, we talk about, you know, Gene has done um, an episode before on uh, composers that, you know, were lost that really had so much more to offer. And I feel like there was just so much more he could have brought to the Persona series. Um, a lot of the staff at Atlas um, way later on had said that, you know, um, Hidehito was just so monumental in changing the way that the whole team operated. Uh, they, they quote him, this doesn't directly translate to English well, but they say, you know, he was the wall that kept everybody in line to find the right path for the series. And uh, they owe a lot to him. Yeah. So um, it's an old photo, but it's, it's really cool to, to see um, uh, these composers kind of side by side. Next we have Misaki Okibe, and she was originally affiliated with Atlas, um, where she worked on things like uh, the Manchin uh, Tensei series, Megami Ikebukuro Persona, so the first game here. Um, she mainly creates music for towns and dungeons, um, and a few different specific battle tracks. Um, but she is really famous for Satomi Tadashi's Pharmacy tune, uh, which was written and composed by her. Um, after moving uh, from Atlas, she or uh, after leaving Atlas, she went over to Chunsoft and uh, moved into com uh, composition and sound direction. Uh, did a lot of sound stuff on the side for uh, all of their titles, including like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon and uh, Shibuya Scramble. And now she's actually developing iOS games. Hmm. So pretty cool. iOS apps, rather. Cool. Um, we're moving on to the next in the series. And this is something that we actually didn't get released in the States until 2011 in, uh, on the PSP. And this is Persona 2 Innocent Sin, came out in 1999, so several years after the first game. Several of the same composers make a return, or one of the, the same composers makes a return. Um, but do you want to talk about Persona 2 Innocent Sin at all, Gene? Do you have any Thing here. I have some notes, but don't you know? You know, I them. to be honest, I uh, sacrilegious. I've never really played any of the Persona game Persona games except for three, which uh, is great. Uh, You're playing, not alone. I've been playing Reload. It's great, um, but I have very little to say about Persona One and Two as games. I've looked at them; they have really cool art styles. Uh, they're a little dated in terms of gameplay these days. I find it a little hard to go back to. It's hard to go yeah. back to the original ones. <laughs> yeah, uh, it it follows the same patterns as the rest of the series. Uh, high school students figuring out life, um, summoning demons and trying to get, I, it's, I think where they introduce like Joker cards and stuff like that. So um, I have a bunch of notes here. I'm not even going to read it because the game was released in 1999. Uh, if you haven't played it and you're interested, I'd say play the PSP version that was kind of remade. Uh, it's an excellent way to, to play the game. But again, your mileage may vary because it didn't really age that well. Um, however... However, this has one of my favorite soundtracks out of all the series. It's really good. Um, we have a few tracks here. Uh, originally, we were going to play just one of them, but uh, I put in two and I took one out of the other one. Because, oh, that's, yeah. that, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let's listen to a track here. This is the uh, Samari City map, and I think this is pretty cool.
All right, I'm stop that. That's it's it's a cool track. It's so different, right, than a lot of the other stuff. Um, Persona Two. You know what? I I want to know if there's anybody. So there's, a, you know, I just went to a few different sets. There's a lot of Persona Four, Five, uh, uh, Mega Ten Five, uh, but I want to see somebody do some Innocent Sin covers. Oh yeah, I yeah, think I, my score might have done one because like, they were kind of going all over Persona. Oh really? Yeah, they have two. I albums. missed that one. They oh, have yeah. an album that's devoted to the SMT series and one that's the Persona series. But yeah, they 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 do a lot more of the deep cuts, which harder to harder to find, especially going back that far. <clears throat> the next track we have here is Battle Theme from Persona Two, and this I believe, and if somebody's going to say that I'm totally wrong here, but I believe this also made an appearance in uh, Eternal Punishment. But let's take a listen. challenging things about these shows that we do live is that sometimes we just don't have enough time to play all the tracks and they do it, there's a lot of development sucks cutting yeah. it off man. Yeah. Like, oh, and the that. Persona series in particular has like these four minute tracks that aren't just like you know two minutes and then loop it's you're, they, you know, they have yeah. really good ending parts too yeah. so sorry uh you check us out online <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, um, so a few different composers that we haven't talked about yeah. because they made their first appearance here. Um, we have Toshiko Tasaki and Masaki Kurokawa. And uh, Tasaki-san in 1995 just moved to Atlas where she was working on the music for the Mega Ten series, uh, Persona and Devil Summer series. After leaving Atlas, she became a freelance composer and worked on music for Touch Detective series. Uh, during her freelance years, she was involved in the music for Acquire's Don Dam, uh, which led her to join Acquire. And then, since then, uh, she worked on most of Acquire's titles, like Sword Magic, uh, the School series, and Audio Bus series. So, one thing about her is um, there. Uh, this is a little nugget of information uh, that only a few people will care about, uh, but there is a clerk in Persona Two. <laughs> And there's this clerk that sells, uh, it's a CD shop in uh, the Giga Macho District or whatever that uh, sells um, sells CDs and music, and uh, it's based on her. It's Celine Tasaki. And so uh, her character, in fact, it, I, I don't know if this is still the case, but on her like Twitter profile, she was using that avatar from that character in the game, which is really cool. <laughs> uh, then we have Masaki Kurukawa who is a sound creator who's affiliated with Atlas, started working with Atlas in 98, uh, and then worked on a lot of Atlas titles, mainly for the PlayStation stuff. Uh, when he first joined the company, he worked on Rebu and uh, with uh, Kenny Tichia and also composed music for Persona 2, um, this game, and Punishment, uh, uh, help me out. Eternal uh, Punishment. Eternal Punishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was also involved in the sound design of, uh, the Mega Ten games, uh, Shin Megami Tensei 1 and 2, and then also Shin Megami Tensei If. Uh, served as the main sound composer alongside Takahiro Ogata for Shin Megami Tensei 9, released in 2002. On the original Xbox in Japan, like 18 <coughs> people bought yeah, that. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> Sorry, sir, your, your work was never appreciated. Uh, and did uh, the VGM and sound effects for, uh, for that as well as the 5.9 channel surround sound stuff. Um, so 
pretty cool. He left Atlas and he's working as a lecturer now at the Institute of Technology in Kanagawa. So still yeah, so doing sound design, research, spatial effects using background audio. So. If you're in the neighborhood, just say hello. Let's you know, walk by, yeah. get a lecture, <laughs> get school. Um, this moves us on to another uh, Persona 2, actually. So it's weird. Uh, the Persona series, like we said, there's the six main games. We really only have Persona 5 being the last one if we're counting all the numbered Personas. Right. right. It gets really hairy. This game actually did make it to the U.S. This is Persona 2 Eternal Punishment. Um, I did not play this. I, I have no idea. I don't... Did you guys play it? I didn't. No. Um, I, I feel like when you got a duology, I'm one of these people that I can't play the second game if I know that the first game is also, you know, like, of similar quality. I'm like, I gotta yeah. play the first one first, so I'll never yeah. get to this one. Yeah. <laughs> I was really hoping Chase would say, yeah, I played that, and I just have you come up and say here where it is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just, just that's the only game I've played in the whole series, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does have some good music here. So yeah. there, there is yeah. one track, and this is what I found was really interesting about the, the soundtrack itself. It actually has a mix of some of the Persona 2 uh, files in it, one of them being Maya's theme. And I really get Maya's theme from Persona 2 Eternal Punishment, but also it's really, really good from Innocent Sin. So I was gonna play just a little bit of both. Sure, that's, that's okay. Yeah. A little yeah. A B. Or B so A, is, I guess. Yeah, B A. Uh, <laughs> so this is Eternal Punishment version. This is really good though. This is the, the version that I wanted to play first, um, which is actually from Innocent Sin, but it shows up in Eternal Punishment too. Let's take a listen.
more like gamey sound, right? Like yeah. it's soccer is theme. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that guitar came in earlier. Yeah. Let's do it now. <laughs> oh man. That sounds like something that would be from making my name. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> good. I like that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, moving on. Persona 3. So we, we already talked about the composers from yeah. the last one. They were the same for, for both. Persona 3 released in uh, 2006 and 2007. 2006 in Japan, 2007 yeah. here. Released for the PlayStation 2. This game, I think, is where people started paying attention. Yeah, I feel like this is really where it broke through. Like, I remember when it came out for PS2, and it was in, not like, you know, common conversation, but I definitely remember when people were talking about JRPGs and cool stuff for the system. Uh, I was like, oh, you know, it's like, it's this really cool, dark, brooding thing. You know, it's... It's, uh, it came up a lot with uh, Nocturne, Shin Megami Tensai Nocturne, which was around the same time. So that was kind of in the conversation. I never heard anybody talk about 1 and 2, and it only got more popular with like FES and Persona 3 Portable and the various mm-hmm. remakes. It's just become like, it's, it's where the series kind of has the identity that I think it has now. Like as old as the series is, you know, starting in the early 80s, this is really where I think most people's mind thinks, you know, this is the persona identity, the, the art style, the music, and I think we got a music example that kind of covers that too. Yeah, well, the game follows, um, yet again, another group of high school students trying to cope with and understand and accept death. And, I mean, as, you know, for me in 2006, I, I was still... I was still pretty young, so like, you know, these concepts, I wasn't that far out of high school. So it's very relatable, you know, like you're exploring, your, you know, like your own beliefs and your own, you know, yourself. And there's a lot of um, the, the Jungian like uh, psychology around uh, this, even more amplified in this game. And I, I think it really, it, it actually started making an, uh, a niche for itself in the in the states. Did you play this one at all? Uh, no, no. I, but I would have just graduated high school when this came out. Mm. But instead, I was playing Killer Seven. Okay, you know, well, yeah, right. I feel like Killer Seven is <laughs> actually a very similar sort of zeitgeist. Really, it's this idea yeah. of like you know a deep dive into the psyche. I feel like that was such a common thing around this time frame. I don't know, but I I, I still need to play through Persona Three. I'll. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, so the track we have here is uh, this is the Tartarus, the Arca block. Uh, let me play this. This is really th- this is one of the the tracks that kind of sticks out to me the most um, for this game. Repetitive, but it yeah. has this, you know, those really kind of dissonant jazz chords, the, the kind of shuffly breakbeat in the background. Uh, this was what Persona was all about to me. It was yeah. dark, edgy, um, like real. And uh, I think that they were able to capture that. Uh, well, I should say he was able to capture that because we only have one composer for this soundtrack. It's the first soundtrack that uh, Megoto Sun um, started uh, doing solo. Yeah. So, before you get to that, I think one thing that's interesting to note, I think I sometimes every once in a while on the show I'll bring this up, but I'm really I'm fascinated by transitional games where it's sort of like you can tell that they're they're influenced by what came before, but they really want to kind of create their own thing. This track in particular sounds like old persona. It's you know, it's it's newer, it's a little fresher, it's PS2, so there's higher audio fidelity. And like, there's a lot of soundtrack, a lot of tracks on the soundtrack that's clearly Shoji Magado, and it sounds like new Persona, but it's like 
It's just kind of starting to step out into like, this is my identity of what I think the series should sound like. And it doesn't make for the most interesting track in and of itself, but I, I don't know, I just find those kinds of things interesting from like a historical, like, oh, there's the turning point right here. Yeah. We have another track here, uh, which is Burn My Dread. So let's take a listen. doesn't just like scream the persona, persona we know yeah. now nothing else does this is really I, I think we're uh, you know four and five take everything from this soundtrack so yeah perceptive listeners will notice that there are uh, words in this song and I'm being a little bit facetious here but what's what's kind of become characteristic with the entire persona series is there is a ton of vocal music probably more on average than almost any other series that I can think of like and not as like everything is the centerpiece, oh, look, you know, this lead vocal, but it's just like it almost becomes part of the texture, the background. Uh, of course, there's like, you know, big signature vocal pieces as well. I think this is more the, the kind of the background side, but it, it's like you don't even bat an eye, right? We talk a lot about DGM. It's like there, there's... Brian, quit Dude, throwing around. I'm, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, but it's like I, I, I just want to say this because I feel like there's always a lot of opinions about like where people fall along, uh, you know, vocals and video game music. I feel like this series has always done a really great job, well, especially from three, of like making it a non-issue. It's like there are great songs with vocals, great songs without. Yeah, I agree. Like the when I when I first started playing the Persona games, I, I thought that the the vocals actually I had heard the soundtrack well before the game uh, was released uh, mm. because that's what I do. And I, so I was, I was listening to the soundtrack and I was like, oh man, this is, you know, is this going to be, I mean, there's a lot of vocals here. Um, I, I don't know about you all, but I, like, my ADHD kicks in and I can't focus. If there's more words than, you know, notes sometimes, like, I just, like, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, but playing the game, I, I started realizing that just kind of, going with what Gene said here is like, it does kind of just add texture to the background. You stop paying so much attention. I think four is a really good example of that where you get a lot of these kind of like, like vocal nuances, but there's not like, there, there's not something that's distracting you from doing what you got to do. And I think that Megiro san was really able to, to capture uh, what worked out for the game um, and played to its uh, strengths. So Shoji, uh, Shoji Megiro, um, Video game composer who joined Atlas in 96, been there since the first Persona game, mm. uh, composed a lot of stuff for them, mainly uh, the uh, uh, SMT stuff, uh, Persona, uh, and then all of the remixes, like, this guy's done everything. And um, he was exposed to music early as a child, and he for formed a band in high school. Um, and so all these games are based on him, about his experience in high school. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, he also made uh, his own computer games during uh, his university years. He was really a, a gamer at heart, too. And uh, he wanted to join Atlas, a game company, to be able to utilize both those skills. Um, remember, I mean, 96, that, that's still, I mean, 
it's way later when we talk about a lot of our, our, our game episodes, it's like the 80s and stuff. 96 was still, you know, it was still new to be. Yeah, you know? it still wasn't yeah. quite, you know, you weren't just a composer. You were yeah. still several things, right? And uh, a lot of his music compositions written from rock, jazz, and pop. Songs are very popular, in particularly um, in Japan, reached like top, you know, 100 charts all the time for Persona games. Um, and we're not talking about just within game audio, we're talking about mainstream pop music and everything else. Uh, Japanese love their game audio, and that's so great. Uh, he worked specifically on Persona 3 by himself, mm -hmm. and um, it attracted a lot of attention from the mainstream media and also um, just music aficionados. Um, in September of 2021, though, he left Atlas, so he'd been there forever, uh, and then he became an independent freelancer, but he's still involved in um, you know, guiding and leading uh, some of Atlas Group and also uh, indie game production. So, cool. And there he is, a picture of him with a Persona PSP game. I'm not sure which one that is. Three? No, maybe? I can't see it from here, but probably. Yeah, it's too blurry. I'm too old. Okay, so let's move on to Persona 4. Actually, this, this one was the one that really hooked me. And I think it hooked a lot of people. Um, this came out in 2008 for the PlayStation 2 originally. Uh, it was later released for uh, the Vita as Persona 4 Golden. It's an excellent game even today, and I recommend you play it if you uh, if you're just getting into Persona. I would say start with this. This is a great one. Persona Four was like the killer app for the Vita for a couple of years, and it was Sony abandoned it. And Vita means life, and I will hold on to my Vita for as long as it's around. But it was genuinely like one of the games that you bought the system for, and like. To be honest, I don't know that many people that talked about the PS2 version, but absolutely, when it was re-released, it was like it was in the conversation for many years. So uh, this follows a group of high school students, uh, which is new to the series. Now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. First time. This this one was really it was the story was gripping. Like it it revolves around like this mysterious TV channel. Um, I I trying to remember correctly. I have notes on this, but I'm trying to pull back into when I when I first played it. Um, you're, you're this student who, an uh, unnamed protagonist, you move to a, a town just outside of the city and you're, you're kind of, you know, you, you've moved to a new area, you're kind of trying to understand and get come to grips with um, the, your new lifestyle. And um, there starts happening, like there's murders that start happening around the neighborhood and you, um, you start making friends and trying to identify what these problems are. And then this mysterious TV channel, um, is uh, you know sucks you in and like shows you an alternate reality with like life's truths and all this stuff and it gets really complicated and um, meta and I and I think this is the one that really gripped me the most uh, in the Persona series. I was actually um, more of a Mega Ten fan than than Persona, and uh, this one kind of pushed me uh, to split between the between the two. So. It's good. It's kind of such a wonderful art style. Like again, I've never played the game, but every time I look at screenshots from it, the color, the color treatment, the character designs, it's like, oh, man, I really got to play the series. It's really good. Start on the Vita. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> There's one killer app. <laughs> Anybody else play Persona Four? Please say yes. No. Oh, no. It's, it's pretty intense. Oh, it's, it's good. We got some Persona fans out there. Fan? Do you like it? Of okay. course. <laughs> I don't think anybody who's played it is like, no, that was awful. Like, it's, it's a good game. Yeah. yeah. I've been meaning to play it. It's just, I'm kind of intimidated because it's just like, it's like okay. so big. Yeah. Okay. Like, well, there's so much games. there. It's like, well, yeah, yeah. All the games are like that. Yeah. Even the Mega Ten games. <laughs> it's yeah, like, that's true. Yeah. Well, the, the older I get when I see a game that's like over 40 hours, I'm just kind of like, oh, like, <laughs> I, I want to do it, but where, when? <laughs> um, again, co composed by Shoji Meguro, and we have a few tracks here. Um, they, they show up here, but not in the design. So the first track we have here is Pursuing My True Self. Um, these are really more iconic than anything. Let's take a listen. Don't double 
the good thing is like it didn't distract me with the lyrics too much because I couldn't tell what she was saying. Um, so it's all right. Okay. Right? Another track here. Uh, you got any comments on that, AJ? Should have been a Bumani beat mania. Yeah, it works. Has her, but uh, it's fine. I was gonna say it has it's a little bit of that Shibuya K kind of sound too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This is signs of love. I never understood those lyrics either, but I love this track. Like, yeah. I, I don't think uh, it ever got in the way of the gameplay or anything for me. This place, I believe there's some times where you're like kind of walking around in the safe area around town and this just plays, it just really gets you, uh, it really gets you into this like modern setting uh, in Japan that uh, you can kind of get behind for the time. So I think it, it worked out real well. And Persona 4 soundtrack, uh, I would say is between Persona 2 and 4, probably my favorite. So I definitely listened to the Persona 4 soundtrack the most, I think, of between 3, 4, and 5. Like, I've definitely listened to the soundtracks for all of them more than I've played them, which, as I've gotten older, I actually, I, I uh, my, my, my buddy Grant, uh, you know, uh, of Stemage, he has a shirt that's like, uh, Never played the game. Cool soundtrack though, and I love that shirt. Yeah. I, I want a cop. I want. I want a version of that myself. I'm getting <laughs> to that love age that too because it's like, yeah, that's kind of me now. <laughs> Persona Five. I, don't, I thought I changed it. Oh, sorry. Um, that is just. Oh yeah, yeah. Say, yes. Oh no, there it goes. <laughs> Small typo. Um, Persona Five. Um, this was released for the PlayStation Three. Like it's it's hard for me to believe it was released for <laughs> the PlayStation Three. Yeah. It feels like it wasn't that long ago. Um, which is what old people say, and that makes me feel worse. Well, okay, let's, so let's be fair. Persona 3 was already a late PS2 They're game all in 2006. Late. 2008 was an absolutely ancient PS2 game. Yeah. So coming out in 2016 or whatever three, for the four. PS3 is like, And then yeah. 5. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. 
uh, this game was, um, it was a, a huge game. It was riding on the success of four, I think. Uh, it, it didn't have the same uh, appeal to me at first, uh, but it is an excellent game. And I, uh, I actually never beat it. I played a lot of it, oh, but nice. it was very, very long. Uh, four, though, uh, was still where it's at, but the soundtrack <laughs> is still incredible. So let's take a listen. We have a track here. In fact, I was going to play this track, and I'm not going to play it now. It's King, Queen, and Slave. I love this area. If you only play, like, three hours of this game, um, I, you'll really like it. It's, it's so interesting. Uh, I, I mean, again, a group of high school students, um, and that's it. No. Uh, a group of high school students, they, uh, they're, they're kind of exploring, like, all the evils and the, the, the problems in society and uh, there's this one, uh, I think, is a PE teacher that is, like, you know, uh, abusive and kind of, like, a child molester and all this stuff. And they call him out on it. And they, uh, they kick his ass in his own, like, dark fantasies. It's, it's really awesome. And so uh, that, that track, we're, we're not going to play, actually. We're going to play Last Surprise <laughs> instead. Uh, let's take a listen.
We're going to hear that song a lot through the next few days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. And honestly, Disco Never Died. It just went underground. Uh, this, the, you know, all of the soundtracks, you know, especially 4 and 5, are very heavily inspired by you know, disco and funk and all that stuff. They're just really lovely soundtracks. You know, just a modern take on classic genres. But, you know, that groove never dies, you know. Beautiful, beautiful harmonies, melodies, funky. I love it. I, just, I, I love those soundtracks so much. And... All the soundtracks, you know, we're, we're, we're not doing them any justice because you go from, you, you can listen to the, the whole thing all the way through and everything is so different. And um, so, yeah, picking out like one or two or even three to ten tracks just still doesn't represent the entire soundtrack. So let's take a listen to Life Goes On um, before we move on. <laughs> Turn up. We, yeah, I think Brian is trying to say that we don't have the time to really go into just how deep and eclectic and how much music there is throughout this series. We're literally just talking about the five and a half, six games, depending on how you count the two twos. And we, there's yeah. hours and hours of just amazing music in these soundtracks. There's a reason why we didn't do an episode on Persona before, because <laughs> the way that G and I operate... We would um, be here all the time. the same way. Yeah. Like, we can't <laughs> stop. We go through the rabbit hole and we can't dig yeah, ourselves no. out. Oh, and good. and there is there is just, like, each soundtrack has got 80 plus tracks. Mm-hmm. So there's yeah. so much to listen to. Um, and remakes again, and re releases. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and all of, like, the, the, the remakes or ports have had changes to some of their soundtracks. And so there's just a lot of content there. Um, the history behind it and stuff, we just barely touched. On it and scrape the surface, um, but it continues. You ever play five? No, that's another. One. I, I keep <laughs> hey. hearing about it. Remember, thing is just. Did you know what it's about? I know uh, vaguely. It's high school students. I, I, oh, oh, what? <laughs> yeah. All right, Shit. high school students. So I'm gonna interject, and I've been bugging Brian about this all week. If you like the Persona series but are tired of high school students, play Yakuza oh, like God. a dragon. <laughs> you can play as your favorite forty-year-old. Alcoholic, uh, homeless dude friend. It's the same game. 
<laughs> it's he, lo- other- he loves Dragon Quest. It's yeah. true. They're, they're also a great series with, like, let's not go into that rabbit hole of the entire Yakuza <laughs> series of music. I mean, we, yeah. We're another, not here for that, Gene. Next year, maybe. Actually, that'd be a great theme for Mag West. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> no hints uh, here. Uh, I'm just uh, saying. <laughs> have a bunch of people dressed up as Gojo running around. Oh, everybody's <laughs> going to be, I'm going to be, you know, Fat Kiryu walking around. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a character in the game. Anyway, we've gone off topic. <laughs> All right, and there's our uh, our tooth man. The tooth man. Thank you. Look at him. It's definitely a bit of a lighter show for us, but if anybody has any questions about anything that we talked about, feel free to step up to the mic or just say anything you you know you want to say about the Persona series. Come on up. Anybody? No takers? No takers. That's all right. Uh, I don't want to talk about it either anymore. So. <laughs> I do, actually. But we are very much close to our time for the day. But please, folks, especially for those of you who are here in the room with us, please enjoy the rest of the weekend. We have so many great bands that are performing Persona Music. Hopefully, uh, if you caught them right before this, Score played a bunch of great music. Lacey oh, Johnson is going to be performing. Good, such a good show. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. We've got, um, of course, Lotus Juice performing. That's going to be amazing. So, you know, he's going to be playing stuff that he's done from the games himself. I feel like there's a couple of other people. I, I've seen the Jam Space has been doing tons of people are just jamming on Persona music. It's We have dug into the theme very hard this year. You know, it's... It's this is the year of Persona, truly. So could go out, enjoy yourself, uh, yeah, and, and listen to all this great music. Thanks for joining us. And you too, Doug. Yeah, well, sorry I wasn't able to forgive as much, but you know, you guys had gotten into some sound chip obscura. I would have been all over that. But I, <laughs> we we you know we put this deck together like two days ago. <laughs> We could have played like the uh, you know X sixty eight K version of the original uh, Megami Ten slide, but I feel Ooh. like we would have lost the audience very. We quickly. We would have lost yeah. everybody real quick. You never know. <laughs> we would have all been jamming up here by ourselves, and that would have been it. Um, <laughs> Did you have any plugs, real quick, AJ? Oh, um, well, like I said, I have a podcast called BG Emporium. Currently on hiatus. I'm kind of you know working, getting back to that. But I'm also currently doing weekly beats alongside Gene. Yes. And, I haven't missed uh, a week yet. Yeah, same here. Though I may miss this week because I haven't made anything or posted anything. I may have to record myself beatboxing really quick just to do that, just to throw it up there. Which, if you want to see some, hear some crazy beatboxing, I'm going to be getting up on the soapbox at 9 o'clock. I don't know what time, but, you know, I'm going to get up there and I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't, how, I I don't know. I didn't know you did that. I, I do it. Oh, yeah. AJ's oh, an amazing beatboxer. I've got some he, I've got some video, I think, from last year of him doing it, right? <laughs> here at my best, yeah. I, I, have, I have no idea how I do it. Um, I, all I can say is that I am slightly influenced by uh, Tom Miller, who went by Tom Appella on Overlooked Remix. I don't know if anybody's familiar with him. Oh, Tom Miller was at Mag West many years ago, I think 2019. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah, I only know him through Facebook and, of course, uh, Overlooked Remix. And he did acapella remixes. And that made me think, I don't know how to use audio software yet. I'm going to try to do everything in one take. Okay. So that's how I learned how to do the <laughs> drum and the melody and the bass all at the same time. Actually, you know what? I don't want me to put you on spot. Do you want to do a little quick, quick All little right. demo? So what would you like me to do? Just do a quick, like a little, like a like a vamp, a groove, you know. Okay. Persona Five. No, no. Oh, Catch him in like 20, 30 minutes upstairs. It's going to be a lot of fun. Is there anything else we want to cover? Like last, you know, last little things before we get out of here? Um, uh, 
Just listen up. What was the listen to the uh, the uh, pharmacy theme from Persona? And oh Persona yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. That, that, that is a delight. Thing. That is such a delight. Should, oh yeah. Also, I did a whole my only other exposure to Persona was I did a whole episode about the shop themes from each Persona game on BGM Four and shop themes for Persona. And oh. uh, yeah. I guess we're ending the episode, the the you know lead out with the uh, pharmacy theme. That's what we're doing. Let's do it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank Good you night. so much for everybody that attended. For all the listeners, if we got some details wrong, deal with it. <laughs> no, it's. Uh, I'm I'm just really happy that we're here and able to talk about video game music. You know, year after year, it's something we love to do, and you know, I think I just really enjoy kind of going back and doing some of the more historical deep dive stuff, and you know, just talking about the rich history of the game series that we love so much and I actually just talking about it makes me want to play the games I'm probably going to do that after MagWest is over (laughs) starting with three starting with four dude Uh, yeah well okay (laughs) anyway fade out they should only on Switch no no No. nothing on Switch oh oh maybe really I don't know we're just yammering at this point anyway good night everybody good night enjoy the rest of MagWest